Hey everyone, Alfredo from Alfredo's Auto Glass, and you guys have been asking me about this Dodge uh, Ram uh, 1500 truck, same thing with 25 and 3500. So we're not doing the windshield on this one, we're gonna do the back window. So I'm gonna show you what you have to remove to get to the power slider uh, rear window. So this go over here. This is where it's broken. This is the one that is broken on this side. And yeah, you have to replace the entire thing. You can't just replace this panel. Uh, there's some people out there putting uh, glass on top of the broken glass, but that's not the proper way. You have water coming in and it's just gonna look terrible. So uh, the right way of doing it <clears throat> is to remove the entire assembly and replacing it. So this is what you'll have to go through. So let me put light in here. The reason why we, um, I didn't want to, it was pretty loud earlier today when I was uh, using, I use pneumatic tools. So it's really, really helpful to use a air compressor to remove this bolts right here. So these are the bolts right here uh, to remove the seats. Um, so there's <clears throat> also a bolt here that you're gonna have to remove uh, to remove the, um, uh, the seat belt. Um, and then you're so first you remove the seats you remove the bolts they go in the back uh, I loosen them up first and then use my pneumatic tool um, after that I remove the seats I get the seats out after that I remove the seat belt I can't remove this the the seat if I don't remove the seat belt first so you remove it from here and then um, you unbolt it from here and the whole thing comes out so um, I like to remove the panels here because it gives you more access to vacuum here in the corners um, And then you have to remove uh, For the seat belts uh, the ones that go here. There's three of them. You have to remove those as well um, So you need an 18 millimeter uh, Metric for the seats and then you are also going to need a 13 millimeter uh, To remove there's a plastic cover some trucks have it not every truck has it, but you're, you're gonna need that too and then a 10 millimeter as well to remove uh, the motor. Uh, so here's the motor and the regulator all together. Uh, it has these little clips. You have to remove this in order to be able to remove the rest of the uh, the cable of the regulator. So um, you have to remove this because this will actually come down. There's two metal tabs that go here on the back. I'll show you in the window. And you pull it down and then when you're done, you pull it back up. So remove this whole rubber here on the side and then it, uh, it gives you a little bit more access to be able to remove it. Just slowly kind of like put your hand through here and, and start removing it uh, one side at a time until you remove it completely. Um, that'll, that'll give you access to be able to get to that um, bracket on the back. So, um, so now I'm gonna remove the glass. So there's different ways of doing it. If you were to do uh, with the removal with a wire cut out, or a uh, wire or fiber line. You could do it, just start in one of the corners, just push through, uh, get the uh, fiber line out, wind it all the way around and, and cut through. Uh, it's very doable. I've done it before when I have to actually save the glass. Right now I don't have to save it, so it's gonna save me some time to cut it out with a power tool. So <clears throat> you have to remove these clips right here. The original uh, window has it, so what I do, I just put a little scraper here in between and just tap on it and it comes off. That way when I run my blader and I, when I'm ready to pull out the window, it pulls right out. So <clears throat> uh, to remove the, uh, the plug from the switch, I uh, just pull the little red tap out and then push here to slide it out. So you'll have to do that. So this is uh, for the seat belt. So you have to remove all these parts. That way you're able to remove the regulator and the motor. So um, let's get let's get it removed. Let me show you my technique on how to remove this one. So this one I'm gonna use a powder cold knife. And this is a broken part. I'll probably start here, make it a little bit easier. I 
as you can see I'm being very very careful <laughs> is removing the whole interior that takes like I don't know like more than 30 minutes for sure so this is my technique when I am cutting it from the inside as you can see I pulling the frame away here very gentle gently I already cut most of it so all, all I got to do is barely the top here because you don't want to go down too far because then you'll end up scratching the car.
And our goal is not to scratch the car, so. As you can see, I'm pulling away and I'm cutting with the blade towards the outside, so. If I do slip, I slip into the bottom, into the encapsulation of the glass. I know there's other ways of doing it. This is just my my technique. It's worked for me. I'm very used to using my tools. But yeah, you guys have asked me how I removed it. So now I'm gonna go prepare the the, the glass because that's another thing that you guys have been asking me because it's just plain rubber. So I'm gonna show you my technique. And as you can see, there's, there was no scratches at all whatsoever. Everything came out really, really smooth. Um, and that's your goal, right? So having the, the blade very sharp of the uh, power cool knife and allows you to cut very smooth if you do cut it with a cold knife just be careful on the uh, center piece because sometimes it comes off and you could hurt yourself so that's it so let me prep this and let me get the glass ready over here so let me show you really quick over here right here so as you can see um it's very like shiny and you really don't want it to be that shiny so i'm gonna uh I'll, I'll break this really fast i'll be right back All right, so you could use this. This would be helpful. As you can see, I'm removing all that shiny off. You wanna have somewhere to, the urethane to grab. So, but I have this one, it's even, the grid is lower, so look at that. You just wanna make sure that it grabs. So have something where to grab correctly. After this, I'm gonna prime it. Well, first I'm gonna blow this off and then use my glass cleaner. Clean it and dry it very well. And then apply my 5504 primer, 5504A. Apply one uh, quote of that, coat of that. And I'm gonna be applying the urethane to the actual glass right here. These are gonna be my setting guides. And one big tip, I already did this one with this box on and it actually hit the frame. So I would recommend they do a dry set. Um, this is an original, so this one I shouldn't have a problem. But if you do have an aftermarket, um, make sure you do a dry set before um, you actually put the glue and then try to set the glass because uh, on the aftermarket, like I said, this actually gets on your way. So you see now this, um, his, I scuffed it up very, very nice. I use the same thing, same technique when there's paint or a clear coat. And blow this out, clean it up, and apply the primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so come and take a look right here. I did the primer, I applied one coat of primer here, and um, I cleaned up over there. And on the body seams, on the corner on the bottom, you normally need primer on those spots, but there was no scratches done whatsoever all the way around the body of the vehicle. So, um, good to be applying the urethane to the glass.
I did do a dry sit just to make sure my alignment was correct with those clips on the bottom. Very important. Make sure you paddle it correctly, even though they're very side by side, still want to paddle up one seam. Everything looks pretty straight. And these are the middle tabs that I was saying or talking about earlier. Those you gotta push in, that's why you gotta bring part of the headliner down. So it's very, very important. Just one thing with touching cup. So I'm gonna lean more towards my uh, passenger side to aim that clip correctly. Setting block two, setting stop. Hey, we gotta we gotta go on the inside and check everything. Right now it's kinda cold, so that rubber is pretty hard, so that's the reason why I'm pushing down pretty good on it. Just to make sure that the urethane touches the body correctly. So, now on the inside really quick. This is definitely the first thing you want to do. I recommend you to do a little test on the um, on the motor make sure that everything's working perfectly fine and you could you could do it before you set the glass um, if you know I this is the original and it's barely new it was just made a few months ago there's a sticker same where when it was dated when it was manufactured so it's, like I said, it's fairly new, so I'm not going to worry about this not working. And if it is, you could change the motor by itself. Now this bracket right here, you're going to have to slide it up. Right here, you can see it right here. It goes right through the hole. This is a uh, 10 millimeter. Like a 
grab it. Sam, can you please pass it to me? This has to go right here before you put this back on here. Very important. And this just pretty much takes time just to put everything back on. So you just have to put everything back. You go get it. So this is what I was using earlier to remove it, which makes it a lot easier to remove. Um, if you don't have pneumatic, I highly recommend you using a, at least a power drill. Make sure you tie this very well. This is plastic and it's constantly moving, so make sure this is tight. But it's plastic, so don't over tight it either. Okay. Right here, this little lock. Make sure that you put the lock back in place. So you push this in and push the lock back in place. That way it won't come out loose. And let me put everything back. This clip right here, this clip right here. And this one's right here, so what you have to do is just line it up because sometimes these ones are stubborn and they'll be between um, the covers. Won't allow them to set properly, so very important to put this correctly. All right guys, so that's, that's the motor back in after putting this in you can start putting this back on so now i'm going to get the seat back in here and i'll show you where the bolts go so um let me make a pause and i'll be right back with the seat back in here all right guys so following up in the next step so um i put this back but prior putting this back on i put the tabs i bend the back um to the body and following that i put uh, the cover back on, put the clips back on that hold this in place. After that, I put this on. There's three of them. Um, after that, I put this back on. This one has two 13 millimeter bolts right here on the side. And then put this one first, uh, put this through, and then put this one second. Um, be careful here with the rubber, make sure everything aligns correctly. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want to put this on before this one because this one clips in on top of this one. Uh, now I'm going to get the seat and this is going to go into the seat and then it's going to get bolted in here. While you have the seat out to the side like this, uh, you're able to um, bolt, bolt it in. It gives you a little bit more space other than doing it afterwards. And so let me get the seat back on and um, just want to show you guys the process uh, little by little in case you're removing it. Now you know what you have to remove. Uh, I also put this um, uh, the seat belts on the side back on and yeah, let me get the seat back on Some uh, sort of satisfaction for us as technicians with this back back uh, Back seat. So this is how easy it is <laughs> And that's how easy it is when you have a pneumatic tools um, but anyways guys so let me run this really really quick so there's a uh, two bolts on the back this one has the seat belt with the bolt and then this one has a little bolt here in the front I mean on the back and then it also gets bolted down with the seat bolts um, and you could put it be uh, you have to put it before and you want to line up everything make sure everything's aligned and then bolt it in uh, the plug 
you have to plug this back in and um, make sure that when you're sliding the window on onto the back you just slide it right into the bracket there's an actual bracket if you forget to slide it you bolt it in this thing will come forward so it's very important for you to keep a note of that so um, that's it guys thanks for watching I hope this was useful to you guys Alfredo from Alfredo's Auto Glass God bless